something's going like they're ha- who, who offers 12.9 million to keep your mouth shut right I actually owe you like to start off a show a podcast with like the host owing the guest right because the drive was how long brutal like hour and a half maybe that okay that's not what you said you said like a little over an hour now it's up to an hour and a half well, we did the math. I had screwed up. I left at what? 2.45. We got here about 4.15. That's yeah. about an hour and a half. Yeah, about an hour and a half. And within Miami City, yeah, yeah. I Well, and when I put in the GPS, it didn't account for traffic, so I thought it'd be faster. But whatever, it is what it is. You don't use the Waze app, apparently. That I didn't use Waze. Well, I had, my phone died, so I had my phone and I had the car GPS. Okay, so I'll start with an, ap- with an apology for that. Yes, I accept it, not your fault. Kind yeah. of. Um, and like I wasn't going to mention it, but I have to apologize also because of what's on your feet. The sock thing, I hate it. What? Why do you, like, hate's a strong word. No, I hate this. It's like a gimmick, like, thing that I don't like doing, but you were adamant about it. Hey, so it is what it is. I actually wasn't adamant. I asked. You also said it wasn't a gimmick. It, no, you were pretty adamant. But you said it wasn't a gimmick. It's a thousand percent a gimmick. Okay. Uh, what if it's like how I really am off camera? And like, I, this is how, I mean. Well, you I, can wear them. I actually, well, but I thought, you know. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I don't like the sock. You want to take them off? No, I mean, I already got them on. Plus, um, I'm a loser wimp, like constantly called. Although I just moved to Florida full time. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that I can get do away with the fuzzy socks. So thank you for going along with my um, gimmick. Yeah. I mean, it was high pressure, but yes. I know. I, know. I, I did it with a smile. Um, no, honestly, you could be doing 100,000 different things. So thank you. I, we, I originally asked over the summer when you were, by the way, I thought you lived in the Hamptons, not the vineyard. So I don't live in the vineyard either, Nantucket. I'm sorry, Nantucket. Yeah, Those yeah, two yeah. Seem the same. Yeah, thing. no, very different. Uh, both elitist. Both elitist, yeah. as is the Hamptons. So I, I li- I'm from Boston, so yes. I grew up like going Cape in the Islands. I got a place in the Hamptons for a couple of years. Montauk still have it, but I always wanted to go back to Nantucket. Yeah. Yeah. And you did that, was that I, last year? Uh, last last year, year, yeah, last summer was the first summer that I was back. I, I was there prior, had a long gap, and finally got back. Um, it's stunning. Like, that house is stupid. The Nantucket house. Yes. So you've seen the pictures. I have seen the pictures. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, um... Did right. you have to renovate inside? No, it was pretty well done. I did a lot of renovation here in Miami, and I, I can't do that again. Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, it's brutal. So the house is ready to go. I know everybody pretty much on the island, so they knew what I was looking for. Uh, and it, it was like, I love it. It's, uh, it's kind of my dream spot. It, it is literally like, for people don't, who don't understand that area either, I mean, that's the quintessential type of home. I mean, large. Yeah, thing, right. But yeah, yeah. It's not that big, actually. It, but Oh, no. square footage? Well, I don't know. I'm not a square footage guy, but it's not. It's, not it, like it's more you're paying for the location. It's like I wanted. So I've told the story, but when I started Barcelona, go to Nantucket for a day, couldn't do a night, then made a little more more money, did a weekend, more money a week, two weeks, month, and it just kept going. But the worst part was always going back. Like so, I was in Boston. You take the ferry back, and it's really just depressing. It's like, oh, there's vacation. So I wanted a place I could see the ferry come and go. Ugh. And then it reminds me like, oh, I'm lucky. It makes me appreciate being there because I don't have to be on the ferry. So it's hard for me to find a place that was private enough that I could see the ferry. So that's what I was looking for. It's like a profession. My mom's from West Point Field Mass, mm-hmm. and then grew up summers on the Cape. So then when my kids were growing up, that's what we did all the time, too. East Ham. Yeah, like, sure. Yeah, yeah so yeah. for all those people, like, I always go, okay, the elbow, right? Yeah. And then it's like Chatham, Orleans, East Ham, go those, all the way right. to Peach So if you're a Massachusetts person, that's yeah. that's what you did. But like the little salt box perfection. I got to ask you, though, like your family, for you to be able to do that, mm-hmm. to buy that home, yeah, where you bought it, the way, so you didn't have to do the very thing, like, how proud are they? They are. I mean, that that by the time that happened, they were kind of they've accepted it. Right, right. But it's still like a cry moment for them to walk in when they see something like that. But they've, as have I, they've had that moment many times already. So I've been doing this now for like twenty years. Yeah. And, and I think it took them a while to come to grips with like or understand like, oh, he he made it like on a pretty big level, but they've hit that. So Mm. like the Montauk house, the the things they've seen me do, I bought like their place. Um, 
So they've seen it. So right. it wasn't like zero to a hundred. No, for sure. Gradual. But I feel like that place in particular and the way it's designed, like the sitting of it, it just seems like I, I go back to that, that, mo- you know, my mom, right? Yeah. That's the part where I go that no matter how much the, a kid, your yeah. kid has success, like it's still like, my God, look. Yeah. And the fact that you're generous. Yeah, it. my dad, yeah. And then my parents are definitely like that. My dad's still, though, more like, you know, like there's no turkey in my sandwich. Like he's still, but they get it. They definitely get it. Yeah. To a degree. Right, right, right. When when was the moment? When was the like the big moment? What year was that when you were like made it and then it, it, it went was, next level financially? So there were two. There were it's when we sold half the company the first time, 2016, to Churn and Group. And that was the first time I had money, which I thought was like crazy money. And then when we sold to Penn, that was more well, like I'm filthy rich now. Like I can start looking at the Nantucket. So there are two two elements to it. Those are the two, like, huge financial moments. But, like, I bought my first Nantucket house before we sold yeah. Barstool once. Like, Barstool was very successful before we took any investment. Mm-hmm. I mean, is it, I know you're, it feels like you're used to it now, used to the lifestyle, used to being able, like, to comfortably say filthy rich, because that is yeah. what it is. Yeah. I mean, you are the definition of it. Yeah, it's all relative, but, but yes. Is it still, I mean, yeah, if you're standing next to Elon Musk, okay, Correct. fine. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. overall. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Is it weird still when you kind of look back on that kid from Boston and like the struggle at University of Michigan and getting it, you know? Yeah, again, I probably have accepted it uh, or gotten used to it. Like, I just, money's not a factor in my life anymore. Right. It was for a long time. And, and I don't mean that, like, my parents middle class, so like Michigan, even that, it's like obviously that's expensive school. Um, but when I started Barstool, like, we really, I couldn't afford like a hamburger, like, it, it, we had no money. It was just scraping by. So, you know, I was fine with that. And I always knew I could go back to like a normal job and do a sales or do whatever. Um, it is kind of surreal that money doesn't matter, but I have been uh, used to it. The only thing I'd miss, like I fly private pretty much now, like a hundred percent of the time. Mm-hmm. I'd miss that. Other than that, I'm pretty easy going. I, I mm-hmm. obviously houses are nice and stuff. I'd miss that. But other than that, I, that's the only thing that's really like, and the obviously plane helping. Thing, plane's yeah. huge. Oh my god! I don't even know how. Be, I mean, people do it. I don't want to sound spoiled, but you know, we do like travel so much for work. It's like we just hired like John Gruden, so he's in Tampa. He's the best. I'm in Miami. He need to meet the Chicago office, so it's like, hey, John, I'm gonna come pick you up, go Tampa, there, back, and it's like a 24 hour trip. So you can't do that. We do can't. college football like shows every weekend. You can't really do those. I mean, you can, but you'll burn yourself out. It's a, like 48 hour, 72 hour to these colleges. So for some aspects, we need it, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it makes business easier and life easier. For that's sure. For sure. Uh, that's the problem. I kind of wish I hadn't experienced the private thing. And once you do, it's like you're hooked. Screwed. I know. Like you can't. <laughs> I know. You can't go back to coach class, first class. Co- I always say you can't go back to like not having your ass warm if you have heated seats in your car. Now I like my ass. Is yeah, warm. it's very spoiled, very bougie, but it, it, it's literally the only thing. Nothing else really w- would affect me. So, and I mean, I get over it, but it's a nice thing to have. I, well, plus you get to a certain age too. Yeah, You're about forty-seven. Forty-seven. I mean, I wouldn't travel as much. I'd I'd be making decisions not to do certain Different. things yeah. because, like, well, I can't get there. I'm not gonna. It, it so it does change what you can do and what you can't do. Do you ever have to, you know, check yourself, like perspective? I think I'm pretty good. Uh, that's probably a arrogant thing. People fall maybe. No, you know, I I I I think I'm still pretty much the same guy i think because we talk about that with athletes all the time yeah right and it's like okay the before the athletes after. are different athletes most of them it's like since age i don't know 10 they're the best like if you're that good of an athlete you don't generally just crop up out of nowhere it's like you've been the best from elementary school middle school and people have been well i can say anything here right sucking okay. your dick yeah. since that age being like you're the best and they never hear no and they get a certain i don't know persona we didn't barstool like we all had nine to fives like we yeah. had so i gra- like we had jobs we didn't like sales job cold calling i think it ground grounds you a little bit like i know how bad it would be to for me to go back into the workforce and all our people 
And it is actually weird. Barstool, like we have a lot of young guys and they actually don't have that perspective because they've never been anywhere else. Like right. we're, 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 we're dreamland. We're la la land for our people. So I, I, I know what it's like to have the other job. I had it for a very long time. So it makes me appreciate, I obviously appreciate what we have, but I definitely don't take it for granted. Well, but that's why it's so funny sometimes too, because that comes across with you for sure. Um, but when I, I've seen the videos of you having to remind the guys, like, yeah. dude, it's 10 till 10. Yeah. Where are you? What do you have to get your coffee? And and I love that you, you're you face-to-face with them. And this is fun. It's a great environment. We love our jobs, but there's accountability. Right. Professionalism. Yeah. So you, you have to, yeah. like, bring their neck Yeah, sometimes. and they don't get it. And if you haven't had that job, you don't get it. Like, there's, and I'm not as in the office, but there's an old video where a guy's like, he was in at 10 or 11. He's like, well, I wanted to avoid traffic. It's like, what are you talking about? Like you, like, but that is, that is what happens when you hire young kids, right? right. I, we are a strange company because like you'll walk in our offices in Chicago. There'll be people there at one in the morning working. Right. So we don't really keep the, you know, watch on them, so to speak. But every once in a while, you get a reminder. I, I struggle with that though. And I know it's probably a generational thing. I don't want to become the, okay, old man get off my lawn person but i'm close yeah with yeah. some of these little sh- little kids you yeah. know what i mean yeah and i i'm like you don't understand what it was like and to an extent it's not their fault right also sometimes we provide them too much we make it too easy but like i wouldn't trade those days my very first tv job was in south bend indiana right on tv during the mornings waiting tables passing out steaks at night like 18 grand a year yeah and I wouldn't change it because that's how I've never lost perspective all this time. But like, I feel like everybody should have to do that. Yeah. And the internet has changed it. Like the internet really has changed it because like then there weren't, the internet allows people to become successful without needing to like compete for network jobs. And there's different, and they can make a lot of money doing a lot less amount. Like, so it it isn't, and we've had to adapt to that world, but uh, the people almost uniformly who come from an existing job with us have a better work ethic. That's just because they appreciate mm-hmm. it. They just, and that's almost an older crowd for us. It doesn't mean they're the most successful, but it means they have a great work ethic. You don't have trouble having tough conversations, though. With? Kids that come in late with oh, boys yeah. who aren't bringing it. I yeah. Mean, well, that's just my personality. Has it always been? Yeah. I, really? I think it's like, just what like, would your dad say? He'd say he's the same, like just a tough, like guy, like a a kind of like a know it all, but (laughs) he'll mix it up. Like I just have a a combative personality. I always have. And it can be nice. Like that's how my friends talk to each other growing up. It's just insult after insult. So (laughs) that's pretty straight. Like I'm pretty straight. I kind of feel like it's an East Coast thing. It's like a Boston, New York thing. Definitely is. Yeah. But okay. I struggle with Boston. Why is that? It's really cold. It is very um, cold. <laughs> number one. I just don't think the people are that friendly. And and I haven't spent a ton of that enough, yeah. right, with sports stuff and World Series and stuff like that, certainly Celtics games. Um, but in general, I don't get it. And the big dig, like, it's just, it's a stressful it, it, place. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a cold weather city. Cold weather cities breed like you're just stuck inside all day and we care about it. That's probably why sports is so it's big sports is everything. In, in cold weather. It's like Miami, Sunday afternoon, it's 80 and sunny. Do you watch the Dolphins or you go, you know, sit by the beach? So there's definitely something to the cold weather. I mean, it's my people, so I love them, but. For sure. But the vibe, like the attitude, obviously even without your accent, I probably could have pegged where you're from. I, you know, not many <laughs> people mention my accent. They say I, it comes out when I'm with other Boston people or like my family. But oh, I hear it now. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Good. I, I wish it was out. So it has gone away. I don't know. Not many your... people mention it. They, I hear it if I'm with somebody else from Boston mm-hmm. or really mad. They're like, oh, there's the Boston accent. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I, I don't get too many people commenting on it. Yeah, I, I'm an accent person. I always, I always like listen for it because I kind of love it to be able to listen to somebody talk and be like, "You know, is Boston? I know where you're from. I know you're from Pit, like Pittsburgh in particular. Yeah, I can always tell. Down here, this is just a just a mishmash of a million different people from a million countries. Um, I hear it a lot. Yeah, when you yell on videos, and I gotta tell you, I love the fact over the last say six months, you can correct me. Um, you know, leading up to the election, and you just put it all out there. Yeah, I, that that isn't really 
new. Maybe it's seen new because the the world's gone kind of crazy. Um, I guess there were gaps. I'm always, for the most part, and what Barcel is, I'll, I'll say what's ever on my mind. Like if I see something that bothers sure. me, I, I'll talk about it. Early days, we blog about it. Um, when Penn bought us, so that's 2020, that's a publicly traded company that needs gambling licenses. So if I say something that somebody in Louisiana may love it, the gambling commissioner, but the gambling commissioner in Massachusetts may hate it, that really jeopardizes the business. So that was something I knew I kind of signed yeah. away when we did that deal. It's like, don't go after politicians. Don't try to create like ruckus because there's two people or three people on gambling commission. They have final say. There's no like, well, this is unfair. So from, from when Penn owned us, which was 2000 and 20, 2020, 2024, I probably bit my tongue a lot because I, and, and I had to, that was a deal I made. Business. Yeah. And it's like, they wouldn't have like done that deal if I'm like, no, I'm still doing it. So they, it, I knew that going in. Once that ended and I got the company back, then it's like, okay, I can say whatever I want. It's a private company. And so probably outside of that gap, that's yeah. how I was all the time. Obviously, this was a different election too. I mean, yeah. everything has changed. I think back to- it's The last uh, three, really. Yeah, you're right. I even go back to 08 with, with Obama. Nothing yeah. was as nasty as- 16, I think. Sometimes you're a prisoner of the moment, yeah, right? Yeah, right. And this felt like Yeah, it was awful. pretty, yeah. As long as Trump's been involved, it's been for sure. nasty. For sure. Um, but, I mean, I feel like you were just super open about your opinions on, okay, this is how I've always voted. This is how I've always thought. Your dad, right? Yep. Like, how did that evolution, maybe that's too strong of a word, uh, really begin with you where you were like, okay, you guys on the left, you're, you've overdone it. Yeah. Like, you've crossed some lines, and it's crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I'm certainly, like, I don't know if I still am, but I I have been, like, a target of the left, which to me was always nuts, because if you actually put down most of my beliefs, I think exactly. I, I'd end up skewing left. But mm -hmm. they hated me, and they'd come after me. I don't know when it started. I Like, Trump started doing all his interviews with like all media. I was kind of the first one to do it. Like I did it when he was a sitting president. Um, I, I people came after me like because if you associate with this, still to a case, people just assume you're a Nazi or whatever. So I really got skewered for that. Uh, and I think Barcelona, it's probably even before that because we would put. Like people called us sexist, you name it. It was yep. all, so we we dealt with that. But the Trump thing amped it up. So that made me hate the left. Like just, well, you hate me so much, I'm going to start hating you. <laughs> and then I probably got co-opted into the right a little bit. Like both extremes are bad, but they saw somebody speaking out against the left. They're like, ah, he's our guy. I'll go on and and people make fun of me, Barstool. He says he'll go on anything. I will, like, if I think there's a platform that can extend Barstool, I'll go on it. Yeah. So Fox News, I start going on it. And I go on Tucker a lot. People fucking hate Tucker. So you have Tucker, Trump, Dave's going on these shows. It's like he must think exactly. And, and that really started how I was viewed. And no matter what I did, I get skewered by, like, the left. And again, it... it, it People don't pay attention. They won't even listen to what I said. Like, I remember I went to Tucker, and it was uh, Kaepernick. Yeah. And I was like, I actually think Nike signing him is, like, brilliant. Like, I thought it was a really smart business move for what they were doing. Uh, people didn't even watch the interview. Like, the, I was still getting skewered. They don't listen to anything you say. No, they don't. It's just appearance, and then they think the mind is made up. So, And they, the left quit kind of calling you to invite you on their shows. They know. Right? I, I've, I've been asked once. Like, so I would never that's say no. The thing. Right, that's correct. The, hypo the hypocrisy with yeah. how they handle it. Yeah. I went on once. It was ironically uh, with Cuomo uh, before he, he got let go. I mean, it was kind of, it, it, it was a little bit antagonistic. And to be honest, I've been through a lot of stuff where I've begged to go on and like, well, let's have a conversation. They've won no part of it. No so, one yeah, it's, um, that's it. And like I, I've said, my background, like my dad, my dad grew up reading New York Times, like that's gospel. We're watching like Crossfire on CNN, that's gospel. Like he really, I think he's come a little bit, but it's still hard for him almost to, because he's seen the things they've said about me. He knows they're not true. He's like, right. it, 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 it's hard to shift. 
sense. But if you, honestly, if I read the stuff about me that has been written and I didn't do the research or the back, I would think I was like the devil too. It's really awful stuff. But anybody that I associate with, I pretty much do the homework. So have you, do you and your dad talk about politics? Did you talk? Yeah, about we do, but it always, it always goes off the rails a little bit. I mean, when I interviewed Trump, I FaceTimed my dad. I'm like, I told him, like, my dad fucking hates you. And I just, <laughs> I, I said, I put, uh, you know, FaceTime, my dad clammed up. But, of course. That's yeah. like, nice to meet you. Yeah, he Mr. was <laughs> caught off guard. Um, which I will, is understandable. Yeah, and I will give my dad a degree of credit, which was surprising to me. So after he won... At least my dad said, you know what? I hope I'm wrong. and I hope he's a good president. And, cool. and that's all you want. I said it before the election, too. It's like, I'm voting Trump. If uh, Kamala wins, I hope she's fucking awesome. Yeah. Like it, It's like if you root for a team that you think stinks and is bad, you should be pleasantly surprised if they're like good. You'd be like, yes, that's my team. So that I hate. Like We're all one country, and Trump won. And you should want him to do well. So we'll see if people stick by that. I was proud of my dad. I didn't think he'd be able to do that. That's a big deal. It is a big so, deal. Especially, especially these days. Um, what What do you think is the reason why? I mean, political analyst Dave. Parker, yeah, right. right? No, but you pay attention. You're a super smart guy. You pay attention to all of it, and which is why I like. I think people think that you just take a camera and just mouth off. Maybe sometimes, but. I see when I watch someone who's well-read, who does his homework, who listens to all of it, and then forms your opinion and just shares it with the world, right? Right. Like, I got to get pushed to a, like, boiling point to do that because most of the time lately has been I've been, I've been doing kind of on the right. And even my head as a smart guy, it's like, there's no gain for me to do that. Like, everybody on the right already thinks I'm right. Everybody on the left may not like me when I do it. But, but I think you're fair with topics. You, especially early on, let's say six, eight months ago, beginning of this calendar yep. year, where it wasn't, you, you you weren't just saying, you know, I'm leaning more to the right for this election, Trump, whatever. You looked at the issues and the topics. At one I point, like, I said I thought I would have to vote left because I'm pro-choice. So, and I got- I remember that. And I got skewered, which pissed me off by the right. <laughs> of course. Like, like they, they acted like, it's like, the Dan Bugino, who apologized to me at a UFC event, he came from my throat. It's like, buddy, for 10 years, you've been like, I love everything you say. I disagree on one issue, and suddenly I'm an idiot. Like, that that just drives me nuts. The more things happened, the more I couldn't vote on one issue, and too many things were lining up where I thought I had to vote for Trump. But yes, I'm not, I hate how for 95% of the people, you can ask them a question, and you know their answer just based on political parties. Like, mm -hmm. that drives me nuts. It's mm -hmm. like, I, that's not how I think, and that's not how people should think, really. Mm -hmm. um, just because you believe one thing doesn't mean you have to be everything along the line. Correct. So, uh, but that's how most of this country is, unfortunately. Although, if I see someone wearing a mask right now, I'm like, you're a lefty. A hundred percent. But that that is probably true. I don't even know why they're wearing masks, to be honest. They but. don't know why they're wearing masks. The whole virtue signaling thing, that, that is what it is. I hope it goes away someday. At this point, we're how many years out? Yeah. And Fauci's even admitted, masks don't work. We made up the six-foot rule. Even with that, I wrote, did a blog, on, a, not a video, during COVID. I'm like, I have no idea if masks worked. They're saying if there's a .0001 chance we can go back to normal. I'll wear a mask. I don't care. We did, I did a thing on that. But then I did a thing about moving the goalposts. So I do kind of end up on, it's issue by issue on what I feel. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, if I hit As a it should be. boiling point, then I pick up my phone and I, I, I do a rant. I mean, the thing with this election that really drove me nuts was the Biden, that they didn't have a primary. I, that, that, was like the nail in the coffin for me. That, really? That yeah, was it? That really, well, I don't know what it would have been. It would have been either way because I knew Biden shouldn't, he wasn't mentally fit to be running. That was obvious. So they're lying about that. And then the fact they didn't have an open primary to me was, was brutal. So that really, really, and all the other issues. So they kind of added up, but that was the one that it, that really bothered me the most probably. I interviewed Biden right after he took office in 2021, I guess, uh, March or April, and um, on SportsCenter. And I, of course, couldn't be live. I had to tape it. Right. The the email chain leading sure. up to that, you know, uh, especially there. Yep. And I'll say this, like, I didn't vote for the man, never would. The human 
part of me was like, this is sad. Because even in March, April 2021, before we started recording, yeah. the conversation I just tried to have with him, you know, chit chat before they can roll the tape, right? Yeah. He wasn't finishing his sentences. Like, yeah, it and you had obvious that something wasn't right. And so to me, I've been preaching this for almost four years. Like, shame on your wife. Like, what are we doing to yeah. this man, like him or not, politically, where he obviously does not all, have all of his faculties? And he's he's kind of suffering, and we've allowed it. Yeah, so that, and they lied. Me, they lied to your face. So, like, the, yeah, it's like, oh, the the videos are edited of him, like, losing where he's on stage, and it's not. And then suddenly it all turns, and, and it didn't make any, any sense. Her answers, uh, you know, it's like, I worked hand in hand, last person in the room. It's like, well, then you've been lying the whole time. I mean, that he, so all that really bothered me because, again, I would be somebody who potentially, if I liked a candidate on the Democratic side, I could vote Democrat. They don't even give you the chance. So that really, the whole thing bothered what me. What are you registered as? Independent. Independent, for yep. sure. So that, and I love that, right? I think more and more people are, try to be, and look at just the issues. The left focused to me just on the one issue and literally was just abortion. Yeah. And I'm blown away by that. But then again, if I am honest about it, probably not because what else could they put up there and say, look, right. this is what we did. Well, and she, I mean, it's just like common sense. I. She kept saying she was very involved in every decision and last person in the room and all these things. And then her campaign was like, turn the page, new start, which is fine. But she couldn't even answer the question how she was different when everyone knew the right. question was coming. That to me is the like, where are her? How did I would have locked every person I have in a room be like, until we have an answer to this, you're not leaving because everyone's asking people who like you, like your allies are asking and they're stumping you. So, uh, and she, she's, I mean, she never got a vote. She, she ran for president. She didn't get a vote. And then they prop her out without needing the vote. And what happened, happened. The Democrats really have nobody to blame but themselves. I don't know that they would have won, like, the border everything, but it was a horrible candidate. I, I said that multiple. I think it's one of the worst candidates ever to run for president. Like, even if you didn't like Trump, he won the primary. He, he, he is who the Republicans wanted to represent them. You can't say that for the Democrats. How surprised were you to see, you know, election night, how quickly it was called, relatively speaking, compared to 2020? And also the map of the country as it sits today. Like, you talk about the red wave that was supposed yeah. to come in 2022. How surprising? It didn't really surprise me. Um, it didn't really surprise me at all. Like, but having said that, nothing would have surprised me. Like, I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, so nothing would have surprised me. I, like, I, I don't know what to, you yeah. know, believe, trust, whatever, but nothing would have surprised me. So how well do you know Trump now? I know you did that interview with him a few years back. Yeah, I mean, like, if I see him, he'll say hello. Uh, but it's not like we're trading. Like, Donald Jr. occasionally will trade. I thought... Because when I initially first met you face to face was at um, here in Miami actually, at um, UFC. Yes. And was that here? Yeah, in March. I thought it was New York, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, and then you weren't at this New York one this past weekend. No. I was there. Yes. Yeah. Where were you? What's that? Supposed to be? Where were you this weekend? Where was I this weekend? Home. <laughs> Home in Miami, because because you probably you just made your track down here. Well, anyway. yeah, we were we were doing the Gruden thing like the day before, that's right, so that's I just right. got back. And then, um, anyway, train of thought. What was I saying? Trump thought I was friends with him. Oh, in Miami, when he, you know how he does the walkout, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's this whole big thing. Yeah, and yeah. We had a big meet and greet at that one. Exactly, but I thought that at that time you weren't the biggest fan of his, and so when he walked by, you know how he shakes everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't into it. It felt like you weren't you weren't into it. I, I wouldn't say I'm into it or not. I'm I I voted for him. I I wouldn't say I'm like a super fan, but I thought he was the best candidate. But I I wouldn't say I was not into it. Yeah, yeah. No, I just thought and even Rogan, if you recall. I mean, yeah. Rogan had a lot of issues with him. Now everything has changed. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> like when God, they saw each other. To endorse yeah. them, right? The other day at UFC when they're like yeah. embracing. Um yeah. What, what's your gut? Like, wh how does the country go forward from here? Because for me, there is concern based on the vitriol, based on how literally hateful this election cycle was. He gets shot. And what did everyone say? We have to bring down the Yeah, that lasted rhetoric. for like two seconds. Literally like a day and a half. Right back at it. Nazi, racist, Hitler, all of the things. 
where do we go? So I'm encouraged by how he started, to be honest, like, which was maybe a little bit of a question mark. Um, I think Trump, and what I say that is, I've seen him be like, no, I'm not going after like the people who came after me. I'll give people second chance at third, trying to work with like other people, even the fact, um, the the cup of joe guy or whatever oh, it's like we, yeah it's yeah. like we went and sat down with him to me that that's credit to trump like they didn't do nothing like he's president he allowed you to come and try to like to me that's a very good start and i would say was maybe i always my biggest concern with trump is was he's so divisive right. and it may not be his fault like I'm divisive, but I'm not president. Like, I want to kill my enemies. Like, I have champagne bottles, and I want to murder them. Like, that's how I think he he kind of gives that vibe. Again, I'm not president. I want the country to get along. So that was probably my biggest concern. It's not, I'm not saying anything he did was unfair and a lot of things like the election, all that. I, I get how he thinks that. But I still want everyone to get along. Like, right. I, and, and that was my biggest probably worry. And it's not necessarily his fault, but he certainly like plays into it. But I think he's been good since he got elected better than I thought. Uh, me too. I Honestly, I would not have let, have let them th- come down to Mar-a-Lago, um, Mika Brzezinski and Joe Scarborough, after what Total- they said, how they—you can be critical. Mm-hmm. They, along with most of the left, went to another level. I agree. Where it's personal and it's hateful, and it actually does play into the assassination attempts, in my opinion. And so the only reason, in my opinion, that they made the trek down there is because they got to save their butts at this point. The ratings are completely—everybody's getting laid off at CNN. If you're in their shoes, you almost have no choice but to come back and—I'm not saying apologize— at least own up to some things and have conversations. I don't know that I could have done that. Yeah, but that's that's a presidential move by him, and and he hasn't always been presidential in right. that respect. But the facts, at least the way I think, there are people, i.e., like my dad, whoever, who watches these things, and if the message turns a little bit, like, hey, he's not as bad as we portrayed, that's good. Like, mm-hmm. that, that helps kind of heal, which is what we want. So, again, I don't, I don't, I'm saying things I want from a president that I don't know that I could do myself because I, if okay, you cross me, right, I don't know that I'd forgive you like that. Um, so, yeah, that, but I mean, I, I like the guy. When I met him, I, I liked the him a trip. lot. Yeah. Hysterical. Yeah. And it's pr- partly too, probably, for our business, like being called like a hardcore Trumper probably isn't great for like what we're doing. We have, I always have used this quote like a million trillion times, the Michael Jordan. We have blue states by sneakers, red states by sneakers. Like I, I want everybody. So, yes. and not everybody in my company feels politically how I do, but I do represent Barstool and what I tend to say, think, cast, oh, that's Barstool. Like that's how the entire company, and it's not. So, like, a lot of times when I do my political stuff or whatever, it's on my personal channels. Um, so, it's just things you balance. But the First Amendment is what I, I really believe the involvement of Elon changed so much. And obviously, it has on Twitter in general. I believe the addition of RFK. I mean, all of those things. Yeah, I don't know if he wins things. if Elon doesn't have X. I agree. It's an interesting, we'll never know, but most of the stuff wouldn't have been allowed, like a, a differing point of view. So you don't know. Well, that's everything. And especially for somebody like you. Yeah. Right? I mean, yep. at the end of the day, were you, I should know this, were you ever canceled in that way by X, by Twitter? I mean, YouTube can be funky. No, I don't think so. I, I don't, no, not really. Nothing like getting, ca- I mean, occasionally suspended, but nothing brutal. I mean, we would be suppressed. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like our views would be down and they went way up once Elon got it. Yeah. But um, we, we have, we've been around for so long. We have like a lot of our own and operated. Mm-hmm. So it sucked, but you could, we just, you get us out of the way. And we, most of our audience is pretty direct. So they're right. like coming to find me like, Dave, we can't find you. You're a, you're the ultimate businessman in my opinion, the ultimate well, businessman, you. entrepreneur, like your resume speaks volumes, period. So when you look at how all of a sudden this country has changed a lot, and I think economically, that was so many people's fear as well. I mean, remember when she put out her plan, which wasn't really a plan, and it was talking about 
financially what she would do with the economy and what happened to the markets that day. Like, everything Yeah, just right. Tanked, well, right? I mean, I think at one point she said she wanted to tax uh, unrealized income, which is like the dumbest thing in the history of the world. <laughs> yeah, quite Correct. literally. Yeah. Like imagine having to pay taxes on something you never make. It's, it's like just, insane. Yeah. That's, again, what confuses me with her advisors, et cetera. That said, um, what do you expect now that, okay, Trump's in four years, you see what Elon, what Vivek are doing with trying to make everything more efficient. What do you expect from a business perspective? I, how it can help you and others? Yeah. I, I mean, I, it's encouraging. I hate and this is both, I hate lifetime politicians. Like, I think there almost should be some degree of you have to work in the business world, or I don't know how you do that. But even if you look at the election and how much Kamala spent on her campaign, oh. and like they're still in the red, that's how the government works. Like, no shit, we have all this debt and inflation. It's like, it's fake funny money. So I think having those people, Elon obviously is probably the best businessman like ever, um, is encouraging because you, you have a better understanding, I think, of like, well, money is like, you can't just, let's like endless, like shroop bucks from the office, like just print them unlimited. So yeah. uh, I th that's encouraging. And as someone who runs a business, obviously, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Trump dance. Great. Great. Aren't you, aren't you surprised? That people are doing it? Yes, to this level. No, because it, it's a combo. He won. A lot of people like him. And it's an it, uh, easy, like, white guy dance. It's, like, <laughs> very easy to do. It's like people do the boom dance. It's very, if, if you can do it, like, if I can do it, then it can get viral. Um, and I think he's he's popular for sure. In the athletic world For where sure, people but, are doing but, it. But no one talked about it. The Trump dance? No, no one talked about them liking Trump as athletes. That was, it, it was kind of silent. I would hear it from guys. I'm yeah. sure you did too. But at the end of the day, on Saturday night, when John Bones Jones, you know, crushed me out at the end there. Well, I mean, UFC, that, UFC loves him. That's For obvious. Sure, but I think the optics of that, of a black man yeah. doing that, and then I was right there and he came around and he gave him the belt. I mean, you should have heard him and what he was saying. He was so in awe of Oh my gosh, Elon, you're here. Kid Rock, what is this? Thank you for what you've done for the country. I think the optics of it for the average sportsman who doesn't understand yeah, that UFC yeah. is that kind yeah, of UFC is like a Trump rally. It's, so it's the best environment <laughs> yeah. to go to. Just fun, pro America, whatever. Yeah. But then you see it with NFL players the very next day. Black, white, right? Yeah. You see it on the soccer pitch all of a sudden, too. Um, I don't know. To me, I'm pleasantly surprised because I do feel like many of them are like me, where for years it's just smarter, smarter business, safer. Don't admit it. Don't talk about it. Yeah. And now they're dancing. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, it doesn't surprise me. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether they ban that dance. I guess the NFL just came out today and said, we have no problem with it, which really? is interesting. That was yes. surprising. I thought they would have maybe tried to. Of all, you would think yeah. Fidel and Wait, By the way, I get it. Like, I wouldn't ban it. But again, it's the business. They most, like, Anytime that gets political, they're not going to want because you turn off, sure. right? But I'm yeah, glad but they they're not. It. I mean, that's the problem is the hypocrisy in NBA, right? Which is very different. Yep. But when you allow it that one way and not the other. They're though, they're not doing that. Those decisions are never made. Well, we morally feel this. Those decisions are made. We think this is best for our business right now. And it, it may be the demo of who the athletes are in the league. It may, LeBron may feel this way. But, like, Goodell is not being like, we're doing women's appreciation because I morally, no. It, he's doing what he thinks he has to do to help the league business. It may not be right, but, like, there's no morals in what they're doing. No, I don't think morals, but I think it's what their experts read to be the temperature. 100%. Wherever, right? Yes. Okay, you can look at, you can look at the Bud Light situation, right? Yeah, right. Um, which to me, okay, maybe a couple of people involved, someone had to approve it. Yep. But at the end of the day, they got away from who their core customer is. And so um, that was a business decision. What was it rooted in? No yeah. never really know, but it's like, I don't, no one would ever be able to convince me that they thought that that was going to appeal to the average beer drinker, and that's going to be better for business. No, that's I, the pressure that comes in that applies to the NFL too. Yeah, I, I would argue i think whoever did that was like maybe we can reach a new demo and just didn't think of the alienate i i i don't trust well i i mean i'm one of them i think there's business 
is almost at these big levels. I don't trust the morals of it. Like, there's very few companies, I think, who are doing right. what we think is right in our heart. Hey, this may hurt business. We're doing it anyways. I don't think many companies are doing that. You just, it's, it was, it's been fascinating to watch it being kind of shoved down people's throats with that kind of stuff. And big at, time. And at the end of the day, I don't care. Most people, right, left, don't care what you do in your private life. Agreed. What you drink, who you sleep with, all of the above. But when you tell me, and of course, of course, the, you know, transgender sports issue with girls, what, like, yep. this shouldn't even be a topic. Right. This, I agree. This should be nothing. So I do feel like that pressure, um, has been there. Because I know executives at companies, their actions say one thing, but I know personally they don't agree with it. Right. But that's that pressure. Yeah, and that that also is sort of the evolve uh, uh, of the internet because a small little bubble of like rabble rousers or people can make so much noise. So you may be an executive, and we see this sometimes too. It's like you have an advertiser or whatever. All right, little issue you don't think is big. A small little group is pounding you, being like, we're going to boycott. Yeah. They get nervous. It's it's like, oh, we don't want this problem. So I think the internet allows groups to be louder than they really are, and it's mm -hmm. the, like the vocal uh, minority or excuse me, the vocal majority is generally silent. They're just sitting there like they're not a crazy person. They're not sending emails or, or to executives. They're just like, huh, what's going on? So, right, right, right. You know, that's... I have one of the things I've loved the most for all these years of watching you from afar is just the I don't give a crap vibe, period. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why I think you've been so popular with, you know, the, that younger demographic and college kids and like, no, screw you. You can think how you want. You can say what you want. Right. I mean, was that, was that how intentional has it been recently to go now onto college campuses? And obviously it's fun and it's a money maker. Yeah, it's you're right. great. It's brilliant. But like, I, I, I hope these kids are feeling that kind of subliminal message there where like, dude, you don't have to comply to anything. Right. Look at how you've, done it and lived it. Yeah, it, it definitely wasn't intentional. Again, that's my kind of personality. If I think I'm right, I'm right. I don't mind the blowback if people disagree. Uh, in, in Barstool, again, it, it just grew so like kind of like that, slow. And the fact I was always the top guy, so I didn't have the pressure of somebody saying, you can't do this or you can't do that. And we built this audience that was really loyal, so it allowed me to stay true. Um, and that benefited us because, I mean, we've been through so many different cultural moments at Barstool, all the way from Occupy Wall Street, which spread, if you remember that, which was nuts, and, you know, BLM, and and you name it, and the stuff in the Middle East. Like, we've been through, and we just kept our kind of voice in every controversy or thing we've got in, not, while not on purpose, we've come out stronger. It, 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 it almost in a way, and not to compare, it's like Trump, the left is so stupid. Like every controversy that they tried to get him in, whether it's lawsuit, whatever, made him stronger. And it, it attached his fans and his believers more to him in a weird way. That, that happened to us a lot of different ways. Mm. You know, it's like every time someone tried to bring us down, we'd come out, here's the facts, here's what happened, this is, we're not changing. And people are like, fuck that, we like that. Like, yep. e even if they didn't necessarily agree with the message, like, you know what, he's being honest, like, and, and that is maybe more in our willingness to talk. Like, we've always, our detractors, it's like, I'll sit here, sit there. Just I just want it on video. That's all I've ever asked for. If you will let us have the video of our conversation, I will talk to anybody. And our detractors, to this point, 100% have refused to sit in that chair. Now, it's gone a little different. I feel like we've come through the other side a, a, yeah. a little bit. But that has always, that's probably been the most infuriating. Because again, I've had really bad things said. And it's like, you're saying them. I have the proof. Sit and talk to me, and they won't do and it. Not one of them no. has. So there were. I mean, best example would be what of me of people attacking me. Yeah. Well, Business Insider. So Business Insider wrote two hellacious articles about me, like sexual assault type shit. And I knew the article was coming. I didn't know what I was going to say. I knew it was coming for a year. The author originally reached out. And at this point, I didn't know, but she's like, hey, we want to do like, we're really impressed by your business. We want to do a story on you. I didn't want to do it. I was like, no, thanks. I'm good. Didn't hear from her for months. I started getting every single 
woman that I was attached to on my like Instagram, uh, what, what else would there be like that? But really Instagram girls I didn't even know would be like, Hey, a reporter's calling, digging around about you. I know we like never met. So it was all of them. So I knew it was coming a year and I, and never talked to it. They came out and people told me up as insider even before they're like, here's how it's going to go. They're going to release first article. They're going to hold back a second one. Second one will come. They'll sell subscriptions. I didn't know how bad it would be, but it was awful to read. Um, like had to tell my parents, n- they didn't mention the girls' names. I was able to kind of figure it out within 24 hours. Uh, with, so within 24 hours, I addressed the article and I had all our communications with one girl. And again, it, it, it still gets me out. One girl became a porn star the day it came out on OnlyFans. Legitimate, not like softcore hard. Number one influencer on record beforehand being like, I'm a pathological liar. And a Barstool fan was like, I know who this person is. And she was on, so she was basically saying I was chasing around my house, screaming in pain. The guy is like, she was posting on her Snapchat private story the entire time. And, she's, and the kid was like, I don't know why, I just saved it. Like, I knew something was off. So she's documenting her entire weekend with me, literally. And she's like, he's boring, he stinks. We actually got in a fight because she said, she, uh, it was during Black Lives Matter, and she said she wanted to blow up police stations, something I don't believe in. So we got in a pretty big fight, and and that was the end. But she's like, if he ever does anything, I'm going to go after him for money. She was introduced to the reporter by the girl who lost out on Call Her Daddy. Like the one who hates my guts. Don't ask me how they connected, but they did. So that's one. And then the other one was a dad who found like out the girl reached out to me in Nantucket. I have 10 screenshots of her like begging to hang out. I have texts, and this is going deep, but obviously yeah, yeah. It, I have texts after the incident. And she's like, I had the best time. When can we hang out? So all I wanted, I put this all out. And I'm like, I yeah. thought they were going to have to write a retraction. That's how confident I'm like, I got them like retraction. They said, no retraction. Once it's news, it's news. And, and still to this day, people who don't like me will be like, well, he's a sexual predator. Like if I say like Trump, it's like, of course you do. It's like, they haven't looked at any of the facts. It, Business Insider dropped the article twice. I'm part of Penn at this point on the day of Penn's earnings, like the day of Penn's earnings in the morning to tank the stock price by a guy who was kicked off the stock market, Henry Blodgett, for when he worked at, I think it was Merrill Lynch, he got kicked off because he was sending emails around, being like, this stock stinks, and telling his clients to buy it. That's the guy. So, but nobody ever wants to hear the story. And when I say there wasn't like 0.001% truth, there was none. And still it sticks with me. Like people mention it. Mika Kynes, who I know is like, worked at ESPN. She retweeted that article Within one second, of course I had she did. no idea who I like. I've never talked to her. I DM'd her and was like, "Hey, I saw you retweet this. Can you read that?" Because I put everything out. Anybody, even if you hate my guts and you read it, you're like, "He's telling the truth." The others are liars. Never responded. Just blocked me. Hated her since then. Well, that's what she does whenever anybody tries to have a conversation with her. She blocks people. She's coward. She's spineless in that way, and it's un- unfortunate because she's talented in other ways. But at the end of the day, people like her only want to pay attention to the narrative that is out there that's convenient for them to get more attention, etc. And I think that's what breaks my heart with what happened to you and many others that I know, unfortunately, not many as public as right. you, is that the left in particular will put out a story and say it is fact. And it's not just Okay, it affects your business. Like that affects you, you as a human. It was brutal. That's being. yeah. That that's the only thing that's really in the twenty years because I knew how false it was. And then the second article it shows you how fucking crazy this world is. They wrote the second article, and there was a barstool impl- fan who worked at Business Insider who saw it in the drafts. So he sent me it before they published. Now. That changes the game because if I can say before something's like, I didn't see the first article, so I couldn't like, I couldn't contradict it because I didn't see it. If I can say prior, this is fake and here's all the proof, they deleted half the article. They changed it. So if that kid didn't send it to me, it would have been 
all this stuff that, that was just made up. Courage by that kid I know. to do because I know. they could obviously. But it shows you how stupid it is. It's like, well, how can I? That's proof of all the lies. Yeah, and I, I don't if I can't prove it. But then if it's reverse, they say, well, it's news, so it can stay. It's like, yeah, you made it news. Like it, it's not news. So. And then people wonder why there's no trust. Yeah, in and the that's media. changed how I've looked at the world. Basically, from like I, I always was, but I don't trust anything based on, based on going through that. And people, even our fans, like we're sick of hearing me say it's like, it, it was to see the things written. It, it was insanity. So that, and then the New York Times. I thought, I, I thought maybe they were going. to, I'm so naive. With that. I thought they're going to investigate that story. The New York Times, the lady who ran Bill O'Reilly out, she won a Pulitzer, mm-hmm. Emily Steele. Hmm. She, uh, they did a whole year. Same thing. They're going to try to write again. They found nothing. They they didn't find one complaint. And I think maybe they didn't. I don't. I don't know why she didn't. Because the other people didn't find anything either. I staked out in this area. There were two reporters on the story. Me and another guy. What? Yeah, me and another guy did like a 48 hours. We staked out and waited because they wouldn't talk to me. And I knew I was getting the same thing. Like, hey, girls calling me up. We're getting asked, New York Times. I had girls recording the conversations. Now, by the way, my ex-wife I was married to for five years, dated for five years. Then nobody, not once. She didn't get one phone call. Erica Nardini, CEO of Barcel, not one. Nobody in Barcel. It was just people I barely knew. Um, so I waited in the stakeout. We jumped out with a video camera. Uh, and I was like, I'm here. Like, do you have questions? And the girl's like, this is, this is a little bit rough. But she's like, uh, we're being told that you videotape girls like without consent. I took out my phone, showed her video. This is the graphic part. It's a sex video. It's so obvious it's consensual. It's like, and then she dropped off the case. She stopped writing it. So if you hadn't, basically, yeah, got yeah. undercover, hiding in I waited in for all day. Stuck. Yeah, it's crazy. What did she say? That, that, like, she's like, we'll get back to you with questions. I, and it, when they published the article, the New York Times, they switched it to a gambling vibe. She wrote, we reached out to Dave for no comment. And I posted, which people loved, seven months of me begging to talk to her. Yes. Like, hey, I'm ready to talk to you. She's like, yep, we're eager to talk to you. Talk to you soon. For seven months straight, I just scrolled down being like, I'm ready to talk, ready to talk. And she, and then they do what they do, which everybody knows. They give you 24 hours. The article's written, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and they just want you to be like, no comments. Like, I was here. You have no interest in hearing what I have to say. So, yeah, it changed how I look at the media, obviously. I try to put myself in people's shoes when they're going through things. I don't know why it's a weird thing in me and um i remember reading a lot of it of course and then your response was so convincing really right. it yeah. was like again i have evidence and it had um, to be you had to and thank god that you, yeah. that you were able to do that and even, but to your point it still isn't going to change the opinions and the scary thing is i i don't even know i just didn't really delete text like yeah. I, like i don't know why did if i deleted a lot of the stuff it would have just been a he said, she said. So right. that's super scary. I remember Penn at the time, they're, I mean, they're a publicly traded company. And one of the girls was like 90 or 20, like, you have to promise you won't. And I get that. You can frown on that. I'm older, younger. They're like, you have to promise you won't go out with a girl who's like under 25. It's like, no fucking way am I doing that. It's like, <laughs> I'm not saying I want to, but I, what, I'm, I can't do what like every other human can do. And I still maintain if somebody, any reporter went through any like kind of well-known single guy's like entire life like they did for three years, I came out the cleanest you're ever going to find anybody. <laughs> so it was, it was, but it was. Uh, Can I ask specifically, this is what keeps sticking in my head, um, the phone call you had to make to your parents. That sucked. They believe me and know me. So it, it it, it was brutal. It was almost worse my girlfriend at the time because I hadn't met her parents. So imagine like reading this about the boyfriend. And again, even if I was guilty, someone who's guilty is just gonna be like, I'm not guilty. Uh, the proof helped. The proof obviously helped. My parents believed it. It's more like, um, like I was, I was posting like sexing exchanges just because I had to prove it. Nobody wants to do that. Like when you're talking to somebody 
privately that you never think is going to see the light of day. That's fucking embarrassing, but I don't care. It was like, I, I had to, you had to clear yeah, I had to prove way. it. I had, I had one girl who reached out to me and she's like, my friend's about to rat on you. And it, it was what, a sort. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, I'm friends with her. She's like, she got mad. She didn't like when he got a girlfriend. And I'm telling you, I, she was with, she's like, I know it's all fake. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Be careful. So, but it was the reporter's fault. The reporter, and I sued them and I lost. And then everyone's like, aha, he's guilty because he lost. It's like, no, it's almost impossible. The reporters, they won't even, I am still dying. I'm like, how did this start? Who's like, let's go after him. So I wanted to just see everything because I know it would give me a lot of answers. And the judge was like, it, um, being bad at your job essentially is not a crime. So if a girl says, hey, Dave did this, he, she does, and here's all the text which basically were like us talking leading up to the night. And then they don't give any of the after. It's not the reporter's job to be like, hey, let's see the rest of it. So it's crazy. It's well, just. I guess that their definition of being a journalist is different from mine and many others. Yeah. But that's what the judge. Matters, yeah, yeah. That's what the judge is like. It's not, it's not their job to know they're not being told the truth or what. It, it was awful. How has it changed how you date how you communicate how you i don't trust anybody like i i was free willing at that time I was married for a while and, and and like i'm not in it i've never had anyone sign an nda i don't expect people to fuck me like i'm pretty straightforward so but i i, I am far more guarded like i really don't go out or do anything so it, it definitely changed that aspect and much more probably and i don't know if it's still true like i have a target on my back for some people so just probably be more careful yeah. but yeah just i wouldn't expect that that was a scary part like you know something's being written that you know it wasn't a cry i was never they never really that's even the craziest part they never like he committed a crime it, it was like we thought the sex was rough five years later that was but those headlines made it seem there's never right. but that 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 can happen with no truth to it that just that's scary yeah it, it's a scary thing and when people forget the human level of this yeah but and i still might... get it i'll get the rest of my life like yeah you will yeah like i, I love away. taylor swift so i went to taylor swift she wrote me a handwritten letter a lot of swifties love and like me but they're like check out his past it's like well you're just gonna read an article that's totally false so right i just right. come to grips with it sucks Are you single now uh no i'm talking to a girl so that but you approached that differently right like yeah every... i yeah definitely um and i knew her a little bit before any of it. Um, I definitely, I, yeah, I, I, that changes everything. Like, yeah. just more careful. Yeah, for sure. Um, what did you learn from your marriage? Nothing, I don't think. I had a great Nothing. marriage. I, she's my best friend still. Yeah, I've um, that, which is amazing. Yeah, so, no. Would you get married again? I don't know. I, I don't think so. Why? It's like Dr. Dr. Ruth or Dr. Chris here. Uh, no, doc, Dr. Phil. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm 47. I don't know. I mean, I guess things can always Maybe. change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want kids? Not right now, no. I'm a dog dad. <laughs> I like dogs more than kids. Yes, you kids. are. Yeah, Actually, yeah. a lot of people like dogs more than humans, period, yeah, right? Yeah, me, me as one of them. And Miss Peaches has taken over. Miss Peaches is like the most famous thing, hottest thing we've ever had. And she she plays the role. She's a superstar. What do you think? I think it's the combo of my personality, which is like maybe not always on the softer side, but very much is with her. The first video. So I didn't plan on doing it, but I wanted a video when I got her. Um, and she's just the sweetest dog. The pit bull side of it. I think pit bulls, people have their opinions. And she truly is the sweetest dog ever. Like everybody, she lives up to the hype. You see in mm -hmm. person, like little kids grab her face. She doesn't care. She's just a super sweet dog. And it resonated instantly. People just love her. I also think it's because she's that, she is that personality. And then Big Bad Dave Portnoy. Yeah, it's a juxtaposition. Right? And then yeah. it brings you yeah. to the softer side yeah. of Dave that people maybe haven't gotten to see, you know? But again, it, it's weird. Like people are like, oh, he did that to rehab his image. Like, give a fuck about my image. But it, it like I had a min pin that she, we had a Barcel crest, you know, like old, old, like Scotland will have crest. Like my min pin was the top of the crest and she was in video. So I've always been a dog person. That's the thing about Barcel. We've been doing it so long. 
people are like, why is he talking about reality TV now? It's like, well, he talked about the Hills, you know, way back in the day. They just, some people, I'm a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. But honestly, the the dog, it's gone to another level, though, that I'm even like, really? I mean, you can't go anywhere without people asking about Miss Peaches. Miss Peaches everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, we've had that. It's crazy. So we doing this so long, we've had, there's always something that within our world has people's attention. PMT, call her daddy. Now it, it's Miss Peaches. She, she's, she's the hottest thing we got. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and we have her under contract for life. So that's like a good, a good thing. Did she sign an NDA? <laughs> no NDA. I will never make anybody sign an NDA. I will never do that. So I've heard that. Miss Peaches knows everything. Yeah. She, well, yeah. There's nothing to know. We go to bed at like 7 PM and wake, wake up, up, up at seven. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> uh, real quick. Uh, you mentioned this and I think I had read this and as someone who's gone through a divorce and it's been like five years for me when you say your your, your ex-wife is your best friend yeah how i think it's probably a combo of things uh we met when barstool was nothing so you know she rode the grind yeah. up with us uh still like currently basically she has access to like all my money like if she just wanted to be like i'm taking it and gone she could okay wait why? Like, so that, that that that's go ahead. So well, I've told this story. We we stayed married for we're still technically married right now. So she still has access to. We tried to get a divorce in Massachusetts, denied. The, how, how can they deny a divorce? Because her and I have a very fluid relationship, which with our finances, they she didn't want to take. She's not like give me half. Um, and we've been separated legally for a long time. The judge said our agreement wasn't equitable to her they're like he's worth a lot more you have to give half she's like i don't want half like we, wow we, we've pretty much agreed on how we do it so we're gonna do it in florida but we've had that joint bank account and it, it, it so forever like i trust her implicitly so full access full access so um that's been <laughs> that's amazing yeah for a long time we both share a love of dogs we both like she'll still say hello to my parents and vice versa so i just like using that example of all the business insider, like she's who I would call about that. She's the first one to be like, and she kind of has a similar personality, like, yeah, I want to burn them to the ground. So I don't know. We spent a lot of time together and a lot of time together from Barstool being nothing to it growing. And we kind of separated when it started really hitting the peak, but she was with me like every step of the way. In my mind, she's entitled to enjoy the fruits of it. Um, but there's she something doesn't abuse it. She doesn't. Yeah. No. no. Um, she's far more frugal than I am. So there's something I think to be said, which can't really be replaced with somebody who has seen everything you've been through. That that's just something. The timing of life, or whatever. And, and we always got along. It wasn't like we had some big blowout at the end or anything like that. It just. The marriage wasn't working the way that we wanted to. So, yeah, she's still. I I commend you guys. I mean, I think that's obviously a huge deal, a unique situation with the financial aspect. But in general, um, especially because as as you've grown and gotten bigger and bigger and more and more famous, to be able to have just a handful of people, probably right. childhood friends, your parents, and now your ex wife, who like know who you are, who would never doubt you or your intentions, like. You can't buy that. Right. That's so it, it, it really creates a very unique, lifelong kind of bond relationship yeah. that, that we have, which is also why wow. the people who hate me will never call her because they're probably like, well, she's going to tell you, you, you like you're wrong about everything. Yeah, so Because she knows the human being. Correct. Not the guy yeah. that you're talking to. And, and you don't want to, and if you don't like me, you don't want to hear, and that's, that's the name of the game. You don't want to hear anybody who is going to go against what your thesis is. So they just don't talk well, to anybody back to in my that circle. that narrative, and then yeah. they just block you on Twitter. Yeah, right. Because it's just easier, exactly. Yep. Um, can you, and because I can't do it well enough, can you, in the simplest way, um, explain to people who aren't fully clear on what's happening with Brianna Chicken Fry and Zach Bryan and, and your role in it? Yeah. So Brianna Chicken Fry is the next, she's kind of like the heir apparent in our female 
Like, we're very good at building female stars for you some reason. Excellent. Like, yeah, Jenna Marbles, uh, Alice Cooper, Brianna, the, the, and um, Chicks in the Office, big two. But so Brianna, Chicken Fry, star dating Zach Bryan, who I didn't really know who he was at the time. But he's right about now the biggest country star on the planet. Super talented. Huge. Great. Yeah, and I've grown to like his music. So they broke up recently, a couple weeks ago. He offered her... I think the exact number is 12.9 million NDA to basically not talk about their relationship. I'm friends with Brianna. I probably spoke with her a week, maybe even more, going back and forth. And I mean, that's an impossible decision um, for her. She doesn't come from money. That's a shit ton of money. Um, one moment, she's like, should I take it? The next, at first, I was like... I, I may take it. Like, that's yeah. so much it's money. It's understandable. Yeah. Uh, it probably would have been the end of her career uh, as, like, an internet person because if you can't talk about something that seminal to your life, people will probably see through that. Right. And because he announced it, he announced the breakup. He broke, so they broke up. And she knew they broke up. But they're like, let's let's figure out how to announce it to the world. He put out an Instagram story that morning being like, Brianna, I've broken up, still love her, blah, 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 hope for the best. And then he was on Raya, like, the same minute. So all that happened. Me, 12.9 million Something's going like there. Ha who who offers twelve point nine million to keep your mouth shut? Right. He has a long history of doing this with his exes. Um, and to Brianna's credit, she was like, "Fuck the money!" Like I I'm going to tell my truth. Um, and she has. I haven't seen it. I'm assuming pretty damaging videos of him. I'm assuming because why else would you twelve point nine? But even her stories are bad enough. Really, like. Emotional abuse, controlling, like what she could wear, doing her Instagram stories, freaking out. Just an asshole, like a total asshole. Um, I think Brie now has made the right decision, and it, it's kind of overwhelming because so many women have kind of come forward after and be like, I need this. I need to see this. Ugh. It resonates. And she's really become almost like, like she... The money's a lot. She was in a great position or better than a lot of women because she has this platform. And she'll probably, if like I said to her, it's like, I think if you don't do it and tell a story, maybe over the course of your career, you make more. more. Yeah. The response has been so overwhelming. Um, so yeah, it was, it's a crazy story. It, it really is. And it shows you how much, because if she signs the NDA, the next girlfriend's probably going to deal with everything she did. Exactly. And then you don't only really take her. You look at, I mean, Diddy's in the new, they're NDAs, 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 and it, the cycle just continues. I think it's crazy Warner Music. I said that. There's so many people in that circle that have to know what the fuck's going on, and it's such big business. You you just turn the other cheek. You don't want it. Like, I, I've had, in her case, people reach out to me with what I would say is 100% credible story. It's her story to tell, but like, hey, I got fired because I said something. So it's brutal. It, it It's brutal. It probably won't affect them, to be honest. Probably not. Like, there's a and, lot of celebrities. Like there's, a tr there's a track record here, but... Yeah. And I mean, I, I, the... All the exes, in their own way, confirmed Brianna's story. Right. Whether they had NDAs, they'd post a video like... The, like confirming, liking my diss track. I made a diss track. I, I made a rap song. Or like saying something that confirmed without being able to confirm it. So he definitely has a track record. So it's not something new. And I'm sure everyone close knows. But um, yeah, it was a huge story because he really is a huge star. But if you look in the world, I mean, Chris Brown punched Rihanna in the face. Yeah. He still goes out. Exactly. Like, yeah. So. Okay, go dark for a minute, a year or two, and then, hey, right back like nothing ever happened. Um, how is she doing? I think she's doing much, much better. We filmed today yeah. a podcast. She was noticeably, and I say it when she came on, like 
healthier, happier, and prettier looking. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's almost night and day, and I didn't really realize it. I'm like, maybe you weren't doing your makeup. She's like, no, I was. It's just I was doing that bad, like, mentally. So um, I don't know her, and I'm so proud of her. It's huge. Like, it is huge, and I love that she's been getting that reciprocated from strangers, people she'll never meet, women she'll never meet. It does take courage to say no. Yeah. Screw you, I'm not going to take it because that is life altering money. I don't care how much you have. Totally life altering. And she's young. Yeah. Like, so there's some wisdom there in her. And and it was all like, I mean, going back and forth with her to her credit, she really was waffling. And then towards the end, she was just like, you know what? I've never fucking cared about money. I didn't do this to do money. I'm not fucking taking it. It's like, and what good? Like, are you going to be happy? with that blood money with him watching. And then this guy goes out and makes songs and makes it like love songs about it. So um, there's no doubt she made the right decision. In hindsight, hindsight's easy. When that thing said, I've heard people be like, there's no fucking way it's like true. I saw the contract. Like I saw the contract. So it's true. It's true. And then I was getting involved because I was so on her side. And they're like, I, they say they couldn't wire her five million. It's like I could wire you five million tomorrow. You like get the money. Don't if they want to do it, get it now. Don't let them string it out. So, but in hindsight, she made the right decisions. All her, she did. she she just like something hit her. She's like, no, nope, no fucking way. I won't be able to live with myself. It really is. Why did you decide to do the diss track? <laughs> so, well, I don't like the guy. Uh, that that it, it it was a good diss track. Hopefully she does one. We've done a diss track before. It's just kind of like we're on her side. And it's obviously content, sort of. Josh had the idea for the first one, um, who's the guy we do BFFs for. It got taken down because he had a deal with Water Music from four years ago, which he didn't know the details. Yeah, so it's like they were saying they own the song. And I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? (laughs) It's like, you guys don't own it. And then I saw the contract, so I understood. So I did another one. Because they took the, I'm not, oh, you're going to take it down? We'll do one twice as bad. So, yeah, I think we're done. I think she's, like, the two last two episodes of BFFs were almost all talking about it. And super serious, um, deep, emotional topics. This one, we're starting to move on. She's starting to get on with her life. I'm sure it'll always be a part of defining her. But yeah. it, uh, I, I knew people would rally around her. Not to this extent. Like so many women being like, yup, I need I, I needed that, like for whatever reason. So you stood up for your employee. Yeah, which I'm glad I was on the right side. I would probably like I always stand up for my circle. Like even my circle's probably on the wrong side. I <laughs> like not to that effect. I would not stand up for Zach sure, Bryan. Of I wouldn't let it go there. But yeah, I ride or die for my people. Yeah, but I think it's you know, people who choose to believe certain things take this, and this young woman who has been through a lot more than I'm sure you knew at the time. Yeah, until, I had no idea. Right? Yeah. I'm sure you would have been there for that if she yeah. had shared that with you. And then you go back and look at and listen to some of the things that have been said about you, and there's a yeah. Right? Those people just aren't paying attention. That's why, again, you can go there and find, like, those people just are not paying attention to what I've said and done for right. 20 years. And and again, we talk in euphemisms and we talk loud and we talk brash and we talk like we're in a locker room. <laughs> and if you want to take some of the things we've said over 20 years and be like, this is literal, you will find stuff that so like, yeah, I said that. I was trying to be a joke. We, I was writing 10 blogs a day trying to be funny. Um that's that's well, is there one thing that you look back on and, and regret pushing too far on with something you said about someone or a situation? Not really. It's all hindsight. Right. W- which we learn from. Yeah. It what I do, which I always do, if I think I'm in the right, I may have said something. I may have said something that could be construed as offensive, rude, whatever, but I've never, in my mind, said something that wasn't 
clearly meant to be humorous and a joke. So even if it's like this joke didn't hit, if someone's trying to paint that as I said that and meant it, I will fight back on that and I will double down. And then what I double down, the people don't like me is he did it again. My crowd, my people know it's like, he's just, he's fighting right now. He's like in the arena being a wise ass. That has gotten me, however you want to look at it, in trouble because it's like, I don't relent and be like, oh, I'm sorry I said that. It's like, you're an idiot. You you know that's a joke and you're taking it out of context. And for me, I won't apologize. Like there's a famous line, but the first thing I ever got in trouble with, the people may hate me after watching this, but I was blogging. This is so far back. It, it, I made a, do you know the size six skinny jean joke? No. So this is, this is, this is the number one. This is the number one thing I've said, and it was a joke that got me in trouble. And I would never say it now, but it was 20 years ago. Different so time. yeah, we were writing 10 to 15 blogs on the internet a day, every 45 minutes, new story about anything. There was a court case in Australia and it was a rape case and the women, the guy was acquitted and the judge said, it can't be rape. You can't get size six skinny jeans off without consent. That was what the judge said. I saw it. I didn't think right much of it. I also had size six, the size screwed up. I thought that was like a big person. Like, why is a size six wearing skinny jeans? That's the bigger crime. They deserve to be raped. I wrote it, published it, didn't hear a word about it. Now, I also would say in that tone quite a bit, like you deserve to die. It, it wasn't, again, nobody said a word for five years. A group decided they didn't like us. We we're doing a Barstool Blackout tour. This will go first cir full circle. It was a rave. And we were hired by uh, this like DraftKings type company. And the logo was, you wear, it's a, it's a whiteout party. So everyone wears white. The logo was a little electric socket with going in. We do it college campuses, wildly popular. Girls dress up, little booty shorts, white. Guys wear white. It's a party. We got a, a group protested us. I mean, this thing was mega. It was, we were touring the country. A group protested us and they're like, they want girls to black out and guys to take advantage of them. It's like, what are you guys talking about? They went back and looked at everything I wrote for five years, found that blog five years prior, it became a huge story. Like Inside Edition, Lisa Guerrero interviewed Oh my me. gosh. Lisa Guerrero didn't know the cut. So I'm sitting, and again, this is where I get in trouble. We had these lax pennies that mm -hmm. I'm bouncing around, but we had lax pennies that I bought for a team that was supposed to be a basketball team. The basketball team folded. We sold the lax pennies. We had 20 of them. People were buying them on eBay, like $1,000, $2,000 each for the thing. I had one left over. I wore it when I was going to war. It's like a signal, like, I know someone doesn't like me. So I wore it on this interview. And there's a quote. She asked me again, five years after, do you know how offensive this joke is? I'm like, obviously not. Because if I knew how offensive it was, I wouldn't have written it. But I wouldn't back down and be like, I was trying to make light. That's what I did. Like you could go pull it. Anybody doesn't like me, that's, that's point 1A. That like days pro rape. I showed up at- Pro rape. I showed up at a rally against me. It was over that they had, it was KO Barstool. You're insane. And I showed up and I'm like, let me speak because like, I, go. you can find 10,000 things I've been on women's rights. You're taking a joke, which fine. I have no problem with being offensive. I was trying to be funny. And, and that, I guess. So going, you showed up and, and, and said what? They just screamed at me. It's a video of it. Like I tried I to get the that. mic and, and, and be like, let they me wouldn't speak. Let you? No, they just screamed in my face. It was like 3,000 people just screaming in my face. Freaking love that you showed up. Yeah. Though. To just try like, to speak. Just like you're staking out reporters. In a... Yeah, well, it's like, I'm not who you're saying yeah, I am. Yeah, that's so hard. Like, do you ever question? I think I already know the answer. I'm sorry. But like, Sometimes is it worth it because they are constantly going to, if you weren't successful, they wouldn't come after you. They would not care. And right. I guess that's the victory in all of it, right? But at the end of the day, it's nonstop. Your character crush you for your business practice, yeah. for your jokes. Isn't that different? How do you not, I guess, how do you not let that affect you? Because the people are crazy. Like it's the minority. Like I, I, I when Drew Brees, there's a, uh, there was a, girl, woman who worked 
And even that, they twist that. There was a woman who worked at um, Deadspin who hated my guts, hated me. And she wrote an article and Drew Brees broke, I think it was the TD passing record or yardage passing record. His two kids, his daughter were on the field. And he, they stopped the game. Mm-hmm. And he's like, see, boys, you can do anything you set your mind to. She wrote an article that he was sexist for not including his daughter in it. So to me, when you're like, how do you deal with it? It's like, I'm dealing with a crazy brain. Like, yes. and, and I have to remember that. These people, give them $100, they're going to be like, why don't you give me 1000 So I'm cool with that. Like, you want to say I'm sexist, fine. The business side of that was very different to me. That another was another level. Yes, but all the other stuff, I don't care. You, like, people want to, you know— dig up old things that that I've done, said, everything's out there. Oh, you know what? All the people who didn't like me, Deadspin, you know what they did? What after like around BLM and all that, they deleted their Twitter profiles. Said, I'm sorry, we used to think different. I haven't deleted shit. You want to go see yeah. everything no, I've ever said? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's there. So, so when it comes at you though, like what do you, what do you do? Like depends. how do you handle the adversity? It depends what it is. It depends how serious it is, who's it coming from. Um I don't get it as much as I used to. I think people have been like, you better bring your lunch pail now. They, they <laughs> yeah, realize yeah. now yeah. that you will crush them yeah. with the and it's like, or I'm, with your... Yeah, I'm not just going to turn the other cheek. I've never been, you know, there's even people within Barstool. It's like, you shouldn't tweet back at somebody who mentions you because we have this giant audience. It's like, I, I don't care. But don't you think that's why they love you? Yeah, yeah, they, a lot of it. And it's made, it, it's made us us. Like, people have asked that. Would you have been better off not having these controversies or having them, would we be in a better business place? We're better because we went through it. It, it, Every time we did it, we got stronger because people are like, all right, at least we know he's telling the truth and and be straightforward. So, yeah. This comes from the kid that, I mean, you had to fight your way into the University of Michigan, tough school to get into, and to stay, right? I mean- I backdoored my way in. It's fine. You said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> but like the fact that you had to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's turned into this. I feel like all the adversity that you've constantly had against you, and you started off as this little nothing like newspaper, right? Right. I mean, all the things along the way, and you have chosen, it's a choice. Yeah. To say, I believe in myself. Right. And then I'm going to uplift people and bring them with me. And we have the benefit. There's nothing out there on me. So it's like, I can say whatever. I'm not afraid of, oh, well, they're going to find the skeleton. It's it's out there. It's, like, right. it's everything. Yeah. So that is freeing to do. And, you know, again, I, I'm not, I feel like we've been, if people really looked at the story, it, all the way, like I've heard they're sexist. It's like, well, did you know that before you knew who we were, we had Barstool Sports and Stool La La? It was a female version, quite literally, of Barstool. We'd post, Barstool would post a hot girl. Stool would post a hot guy. The girl who ran it became the biggest YouTube star in the history of the world, Jenna Marbles, and left. So it shuddered, but we gave it to her. Or Alice Cooper. Or, or so, like, there's different things. They, they do charity for this because they want to be named. It's like, we did the Boston Marathon bombing charity before you knew who we were. We've done military dogs. There's so much it, good it, that it, you it, give it, back to. And I think the first time I ever communicated with you was during COVID, and you were trying to help these small businesses. The Barstool Fund. That, right. The, sorry, the Barstool Fund. That had been shut down. And I remember I would, cried watching some of these stories. Yeah, they were donated, emotional. I was like, That's what probably the best thing that that we've done the coolest thing yeah. like, that's what people don't want to talk about and then the haters will be like he's doing that for his ego it's like what like what are you, you you're can't, making any money yeah, it, it, well they're like he wants people think he's good it's like how are we going to get more money if we don't publicize it not that i even care there though the, there's always going to be haters. you're beyond that but like the different things you've taken a chance on i mean the one bite the pizza stuff is insane and it's everywhere and people want you like here yeah. try mine and then you'll have your couple stragglers where the guy's like you know, yeah, get out well, of my store. Yeah, but, and they don't even know why. They don't they even don't know, know why. why. It's like, why do you, don't you like me? He doesn't even have an answer. No, 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 He's no. like, you stink for small business. It's like, what are you talking about? And, and then I'm sitting there yelling at the video, like, dude, do you know what he's done for small businesses? But then the content. The great. flip side. I know I have gold when he does that. So I'm like, all right, thank you. Like, that's going to be And now brilliant. you're going to <laughs> yeah, poke yeah, the bear, poke yeah. the bear, poke the bear. Um, okay. I hope that you are, I hope that in your, like, quiet moments, which I don't know how many you actually have, but, like, that you reflect and like can super can appreciate all that you've done like for yourself for your family for others for people everywhere honestly who are like 
kind of afraid to take a chance, afraid to be true to themselves in many ways these days with their voice, right? Do you ever take that time and really just reflect on how much you've done? No, I mean, we have things that happen that that force you to reflect and, and just that you appreciate, whether it's the bar still fun, whether it'll be like, you know, we did a pizza review for a family whose son like passed away and it was like kind of like a dying wish type thing. Mm -hmm. So things happen that force you to be, man, like we made an impact there that we weren't planning on, but it's never, it's never planned and it's not really why we do it. Uh, but we've been lucky in a lot of respects. So it, it's cool, but I don't, I don't really step back and think that much about that. No. What are you most proud of? I mean, the Barstool Fund's certainly one of them, but I'm proud of the company. It's like, we have, I don't know, 300 people who pretty much enjoy their job. So that came from nowhere. Like that, that, and I mean, we still have the guy who's employee number one, who's a fucking idiot, but like sitting at my table, he's still there. A lot of the people have been there for a long time. And that's cool to see. It's a job. It's something people wake up and they're happy. So that, that is cool, even though a lot of them are morons. But um, that's probably the company itself, like that we built yeah. something that is still here 20 years later. I think in media, it's really hard to kind of be cool, cutting edge for that long. And and we've done it. We came from nowhere. So it nowhere. is cool. Yeah. Like, what's next? I mean, obviously, you keep this going, but you could have hung it up years ago. What, to what end here, right? Like, how much do you want to keep doing? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. At least probably three, five years and turn it over to people within our company who want to run it. Like, But when what does Dave Portnoy do? Then? See, a misconception like, is that I need to work or I, I don't. Everyone, no, you're not. Okay. Everybody says that. Everybody knows. Because you have you enjoy your work so much, it's obvious. Yeah. A lot of, like, the business people, you, you're like, no, you're not going to— I, I could bet on horses every single day, <laughs> uh, every day. I could right? disappear beach, travel to like, maybe like a safari, I love animals. But yeah, I don't, there's lots of things I don't love with the job. Like I don't love doing contracts and all that. Like yeah, the, people do that. Yeah, but it's always me. It's hard really? to do it without me. Yeah, it's really hard to do it without me. It's like one of those companies where I'm so integral to it. It's hard to do the, it's just hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think is the biggest misconception that people have? About me? Yeah. I think the people who, who know me know me pretty well. It's the people who hate me, just have me wrong, but I don't give a fuck about them anymore. I don't know. Uh, I, I, everything's out there, so it, yeah. it, it really, and I don't really hide much of it, so it, it's pretty well out there. I just feel like that there's this, like, total soft guy right maybe miss peaches is revealing more of that for us but there's something else especially like when you look at how much you've defended brianna and there's there's so many things that's that, me that's always yeah. been me but it can be wrong too it, it it it's both it's uh like i'm a tough person to negotiate with like i don't really negotiate i like i just here's what i think and i'm going um so it depends how you know me, I guess. Yeah. Like, I don't think my employees would be like, oh, he's a soft guy. I don't I don't think they'd say that at all. You don't want them to. No, and really? I, I don't think they would say that. <laughs> like, so. Well, you kind of are in some ways. Yeah, to like Miss Peaches and... and, and <laughs> I think most of my employees say he's not a soft guy, but if we need him, he'll be there. So, but it, it, it you're not gonna... I don't want to hug. I'm not gonna... You're not getting... Like, I don't give my... No one gets compliments, like at Barstool. I don't give compliments. Like, and that does bother some people. It's like a manager, like I expect you to do well. Like, you'll hear from me if you're doing bad. If you don't hear from me, that's a compliment, but it's not a raw, raw organization. You're you. Yeah, I, I am. Yeah, I am me. Yeah. I think it's awesome. And I think that like you have changed, you've changed so much in this society. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Wait, you just compliment. You just said thank you. I'm going to take that as. A oh, I'll say uh, if someone's <laughs> like thank you, that's like basic. From manners. you, that's a big yeah. deal. Well, I'll you, take it. Yeah, all right. I know. I mean it. It's uh, it's been awesome to watch from afar, and thank I've you. done it without without fear because that's what uh, that's what we need. So appreciate it. Portnoy. Thanks. All right. Your socks off. Yeah, socks didn't matter. I could have done this without the socks. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>